Good evening, it's 8 o'clock. Our lead story tonight is what's been a lead story in India's Silicon Valley this week. That's been the city underwater as it gets record amount of rain. Is it just about climate change but also the crumbling infrastructure? Our top headlines tonight, 18 times above normal rain in Bengaluru in the last 24 hours. It's the second time in a week that India's Silicon Valley is sinking. The IT sector says crores is lost. The chief minister promises compensation. Boats and tractors are out in Bengaluru today. Meanwhile, Kaveri water supply is cut to Bengaluru as there's flooding in the main pumping station. So there's lots of rain, but no water to drink. CCTV footage shows the Mercedes at Cyrus Mystery and the Pandols were traveling in just before the accident. The police say it's now confirmed that rear seat passengers were not wearing seat belts. The last ride to Cyrus Mystery and Jahangir Pandol will be held tomorrow. We speak to the priest of the fire temple that Mystery had visited yesterday. The priest says the Mysteries had renovated the entire fire temple. Liz Truss is Britain's new Prime Minister. Conservative Party members choose their new Prime Minister from Truss and Sunak. So clearly Tory members not ready for Rishi yet. Though Liz Truss wins with 80,000 plus votes, Rishi Sunak got 60,000 plus. Better than expected. I'd like to thank the 1922 committee, the party chairman and the Conservative Party for organising one of the longest job interviews in history. Thank you very much. Home Minister Amit Shah in Mumbai, the first time after the new uh, government was sworn in. Amit Shah speaks to BGP workers, says Mission 150 for the BMC elections teach Uddhav a lesson. Meanwhile, in Delhi, Nitish Kumar meets Rahul Gandhi. Delhi's Rajpath now becomes Kartavya Path, an abolition of symbols relating to the colonial mindset, says the New Delhi Municipal Corporation. Days before the new Central Vista Avenue will be unveiled. Our lead story tonight at 8 o'clock, there's heavy rain in Bengaluru. This as Bengaluru has got a record 18 times of normal rain for the last 24 hours. What's the impact? Let's go across to Shrija. Shrija, what is the latest now? Because for Bengaluru, these are all too familiar scenes now. Well, the place that I'm reporting from is, uh, you know, it's pouring and uh, uh, this is also one of the outer ring roads that connects to the IT corridor and it started raining just about an hour and a half ago and this is the situation and it will remain uh, till about September 9th. Now that's what uh, the IMD has predicted but to give you an idea about what really is happening on ground, several of the residential areas are completely underwater. In fact, uh, instead of vehicles on ground, uh, on the roads, you are actually witnessing boats that are being deployed, not just by the neighborhoods, especially also by the SDRF and the NDRF teams as well. To give you a fair idea, which are the major areas that's been completely affected? Now, that's the IT corridor, especially uh, the Mahadevpura zone. And uh, we're talking about like Belandur areas and also Vartur, Panathur Road. Now, these are certain areas that's witnessed in the last exactly three to four days where we've seen flooding. What's more important to note here is that these are certain areas which have been visited by Chief Minister Basvaraj Bombay himself. And he has addressed the grievances of the people saying that uh, he will ensure that the civic body will immediately, you know, clear the uh, uh, stormwater drains, that is desilting of the stormwater drains. But clearly that's not happened and it's once again, and of course, uh, you Shija, know, it's an empty also that the Kaveri, and Bengaluru is underwater. Yes, and of course, Shija, we've seen also that the water supply from the Kaveri pumping stations has now been stopped because of flooding in the pumping stations. What will the impact be for the people of Bengaluru? Well, for the 12 million population here in the city of Bengaluru, half of the uh, population uses especially the Kaveri. That's the major drinking water. And certain areas, to name a few, majorly that will be affected is Bengaluru North and Bengaluru East. Now, these are the two areas that will be majorly affected by drinking water. 
and this is for two days today and tomorrow as well of course there's not really an alternate uh, arrangements that's been made it's basically for people to ensure that they can get the drinking water themselves either through tankers or uh, you know getting bislery cans right, so Jason, clearly there's no alternative arrangements at the moment so really uh, so i said the dichotomy there of so much rain water but no water to drink let's just look at the top highlights of what's happened here in the last 24 hours For the second time in a week in the Silicon City of India, large parts of Bengaluru are underwater. A man nearly drowned in the flooded street near Marathahalli Silk Board Junction Road. In the nick of time, he was rescued by security guards. Lakes have breached, sewage from stormwater drains have overflowed, entering homes and infrastructure has crumbled. In place after place, as roads turned into rivers, boats and tractors replaced cars. Heavy rains caused havoc in the slums in the southeast part of Bengaluru, near Munekolalu and Belandur. Over 1,500 families have been affected by the torrential rains, rendering them homeless. But even upmarket areas were badly affected. Over 25 places reported flooding. What you see on to my right is this is the entry point to especially the layout which at least has over 400 houses, residents. Uh, what you see here is especially people, uh, you know, taking loaves of breads um, and also food packets, milk packets so that they can give it to especially the residents who are stuck inside their homes. No, it's actually the second time. A couple of days before we had the same. No, this started happening this year only and we had got the situation like five days ago mm -hmm. and everybody worked together. Huge rains which is happening so we didn't expect that such huge rain. Water gushed inside the Wipro office after the Halanayakanahalli lake breached in Sarjapur entirely flooding the campus. Techies have taken leave from work and are out on the flooded streets helping their neighborhoods. Chief Minister Basavaraj Bommai, who visited the same areas that we have reported from in Whitefield and Sarjapur Road, has once again made an empty promise. The Outer Ring Road Company Association has written to the Chief Minister that the companies have suffered a loss of 225 crores in just one day. According to the Met Department, Karnataka's capital, Bengaluru, recorded 131.6 mm of rain in the past 24 hours, making Monday, the 5th of September, the wettest September day since 2014. What you see right behind me is especially they're using a coracle to get to each person's house and also uh, you know, be able to give them or distribute food packets to them. Now that is the situation especially in the city of Bengaluru with camera person Govind Srija for NDTV. Moving to the other big story, the day after the tragic deaths of Cyrus Mistri, former chairman of Tata Sons and Jahangir Pandol, everybody is still trying to investigate on what actually happened. A special probe has been ordered, but from what has emerged on speaking to police and eyewitnesses, it seems clear now that the rear seat passengers, Cyrus Mistri and Jahangir Pandol, who were both killed, were not wearing seat belts. Also, evidence is now emerging that the car may have been speeding, though the police are said to wait for the final probe. And also, many questions being raised on the highway that they were driving on, which went abruptly from a three-lane to a two-lane. Let's just watch the special report. The Mercedes SUV belonging to the Pandols. Just 20 minutes before the fatal accident in Palghar, in which Cyrus Mistri and Jahangir Pandol, both sitting in the rear seat, were killed. Hmm. 
The police are now looking at a computer chip in the SUV to get an idea of whether there was a mechanical problem. Though it is widely believed that the driver may have lost control of the vehicle in a high-speed overtaking maneuver. डेटा रहता है अंदर का वो मर्सिडीज बेंज कंपनी की तरफ से हम उसके पैरामीटर्स चेक करेंगे क्योंकि हाई एंड व्हीकल्स में हमें पता चलता है कि टायर प्रेशर कितना था वेदर वो ब्रेक का फ्लूड सही था या नहीं था वो व्हीकल देखने के बाद पता चलता है कि इट मस्ट बी इन हाई स्पीड सिग्निफिकेंटली द पुलिस बिलीव द डिसीज पैसेंजर्स वर नॉट वेयरिंग सीट बेल्ट्स इन द रेयर सीट द एक्सीडेंट took place on a spot on the road when a three lane road changes to a two lane one on a bridge along the Mumbai Ahmedabad highway the vehicle hit a divider at this location the mortal remains of Cyrus Misri and Jahangir Pandol were brought to Mumbai's JJ hospital late on Sunday night where a post mortem was conducted and the last rites will be performed on Tuesday morning Anahita Pandol who was driving the car and her husband Darius Pandol are being treated at HN Reliance Hospital there are questions also being asked about what happens now to the nearly 30 billion dollar shapurji palonji empire just over 2 months ago sirus's father palonji mistri died at the age of 93 for now functionality of the company which has just emerged from a difficult restructuring exercise will continue as usual with sohit mishra and sakshi bajaj bureau report indi tv In a tragic irony Cyrus Mistry and his close friends the Pandols were returning from the Udwada fire temple that gone there to offer prayers for the Pandols late father who had died just a week ago the guru of this temple the Sturji Khurshid told NTTV that Cyrus Mistry and his late father were silent donors of this temple they paid for the entire renovation but didn't want anyone to know about it kal yahan par Cyrus Mistry aaye the तो यहाँ पर वो कब आए थे कितने बजे और किस तरह से क्या मुलाकात थी वो करीबन 11 बजे इधर आए थे वो एक रेगुलर विजिट थी आप जो ये मंदिर देख रहा है वो अभी छह महीने पहले ही उसका रेस्टोरेशन हुआ था वो पूरा रेस्टोरेशन ये मंदिर का शापू जी पालन जी ग्रुप ने करवाया था और कभी भी साइरस और उनके भाई शापू रेगुलर विजिट करके सब काम उनकी निगरानी में देखते थे जितनी बार आते थे वो साइलेंट विजिट करके चले जाते थे ऐसा नहीं होता था कि वो वीआईपी ट्रीटमेंट उसको मिले और कुछ भी नहीं सब लोग उनके फादर भी ऐसे ही आते थे और ऐसे ही दर्शन करके चले जाते थे साइरस भी वैसे ही थे Move into the other big headline. Well, Liz Truss is Britain's new prime minister. She is the United Kingdom's third woman prime minister. The 47-year-old Liz Truss promised to slash taxes and boost defense spending the results of voting by conservative party members was announced this evening 5 o'clock ist where she got 57.4% of the vote share she got over 80000 votes of the total tory members voting while rishi sunak got 60000 votes in fact he did better than expected remember all the polls all the bookies odds were showing him trailing behind our outgoing It's an honor to be elected as leader of the Conservative and Unionist Party. I'd like to thank the 1922 committee, the party chairman and the Conservative Party for organizing one of the longest job interviews in history. Thank you very much. So Liz Truss is the new prime minister remember of course this is not a general election this is a vote among tory members because then Boris Johnson came into the sweeping victory when he stepped down there was no need for a fresh election but Radhika the big question was that would Liz Truss be the candidate to win in a general election as compared to Rishi Sunak and there is from India and many views within Great Britain also which says that you know tory members were the conservative party was not ready for a brown prime minister yet Well um the labor party is certainly happy some of the labor party members who I spoke with uh, did not say it on camera but did admit that they uh, seem to think that list trust is is good news for them because Rishi perhaps would have been um performing even better than Liz would in at a time when Britain is going through a cost of living crisis uh whether uh whether britain is ready or not for a prime brown prime minister well there has been no official reaction although a lot of us have been asking those questions uh but the conservative party today their official stand is that they weren't actually looking only for an administrator or a head of state they were also looking for 
uh, a leader to the Conservative Party, somebody to break keep the party together, somebody who isn't seen as a rebel. And, and clearly, uh, Rishi Sunak was the one who led that campaign against Boris Johnson whilst in his government and did not uh, uh, sort of shy away from putting in his paper, saying what he had to say, and also led that 60-odd cabinet members resigning as a result Boris Johnson had to leave. Um, there are various reasons, really, why Liz has won today, but this particular mandate of the Conservative Party is very, very minuscule. It's only under 1% of Britain's population. On the ground, I've been collecting some reactions, and they have been farly, uh, far mixed, reactions. In fact, one such um, young couple, let's say, uh, is here with me and um, they are from Scotland. Uh, tell me a little bit about yourself and let me get your opinion about the fact that Liz Truss is now the Prime Minister. Um, well, I think Liz Truss will encourage more people in Scotland to vote for the Scottish National Party. I am not a Scottish nationalist. But I think until we have a Labour government in Westminster, the Scottish nationalists will do very well. Okay, what about you, sir? I think, yeah, I think Liz Trust is very similar in some ways to Boris Johnson, in that she'll say something without thinking and then regret it later. And I think she's already upset two or three people, um, in France and in Scotland. And, uh, and so, yes, I don't think she's doing herself any help. Would, would Rishi have made a better Prime Minister? I, out of the two, I would say perhaps yes. Uh, of the two, yes. Of the two, yes. I think, I think he's more diplomatic. Okay. Yeah. And have you both traditionally supported the Labour? Uh, no. No. Um, I was a Liberal for a while. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank okay. you very much and enjoy okay. your day in London. So, uh, a Scottish couple who seem to think that um, perhaps Rishi could have been the better candidate of the two, where of, uh, thank you, of uh, Liz and Rishi. But um, a lot of pessi pessimism is what I pick up on the ground uh, from various people, Sonia. Some of them, of course, saying that the cost of living crisis has been like never before in Britain. The fact that people are coming out of the pandemic but are coming out jobless. Um, so many variety of reasons which they find um, of course, extremely so, annoying and And a huge challenge, of course. And this, of course, as India has beaten uh, the United Kingdom as the fifth largest economy. So the new prime minister really has a crown of thorns uh, before the next elections in the United Kingdom. Thanks so much, Radhika, for that update. Meanwhile, European markets sank today as Russia announced it is halting a gas flow and supply to Europe with the Europe euro hitting a 20-year low after Russia stopped gas supplies. The euro sank below 0.99 to the dollar. That's the lowest level since 2002. Russia's decision on gas flows comes after G7 plans to impose a price cap on Russian oil. In India, the Nifty and Sensex gained despite these weak global queues. The Sensex gained by 442 points. The Nifty gained by 126 points. All sectors closed in the green today. Services, uh, PMI rose to 57.2 in August versus 55.5 in July. So that's good news with India's services sector expanding for the 13th straight month. Well, let's just look at all the politics. Home Minister Amit Shah in Mumbai today, the first time after the new government was formed. This as in Delhi. Nitish Kumar, the Bihar Chief Minister, met Congress leader Rahul Gandhi, who was also in Gujarat today. Amit Shah, while in Mumbai, spoke also to BGP workers, told them to get ready for the BMC elections, saying that Udhav Thakre had to be taught a lesson for his betrayal of the BJP. Meanwhile, Nitish Kumar and Rahul Gandhi meeting there for the first time as Nitish Kumar has been making it clear that if all opposition parties come together, he feels that they can defeat the BJP. And Rajpath has now become Kartavya Path. Let's go across to Vedant because, of course, the historic Rajpath there being renamed just before it's going to be reopened. The Central Vista Avenue will be reopened. Vedant, uh, what's the logic behind renaming Rajpath Kartavya Path? That's right, Sonia. This iconic stretch uh, between the India Gate and the Rashtrapati Bhavan will now be known as Kartavipat. So, Rajpath really is history as uh, Rajpath and the Central Vista lawns will now be known as Kartavipat. Uh, the NDMC, as per sources, will be convening an official meeting to make an announcement on the 7th of September, as you mentioned, uh, ahead of uh, the unveiling of the new revamped uh, Central Vista. Now, a very strong symbolism there also uh, because uh, the Prime Minister has been 
saying uh, that all uh, remaining signs of the so-called colonial past and uh, all signs of servitude must be abolished. He said that on the 15th of August. He also said that uh, while commissioning uh, the INS Vikrant. Uh, so that, uh, uh, keeping that in mind, a strong message being sent out. Also, uh, very interestingly, during his uh, 15th August speech, he mentioned uh, as one of the punch pran, uh, the realization of duties uh, and these duties not just uh, pertaining only to citizens but also uh, to legislators, to the chief ministers and also uh, the prime minister. So, that's why the uh, so hence uh, the realization of duties and hence the name so Karta Vipat, right.